Hello, I'm Adam Robertson and you're listening to This Is Irobrox, The Rangers Podcast. Please stay at home, protect the NHS and save lives. And sit down. Hello and welcome to This Is Irobrox, The Rangers Podcast, where I, William Boyd, chat to former Rangers centre-half, Majid Bagera for the next instalment of the interview series. Hello, Majid. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. And you? Oh, I'm great, thanks. Um, so, let's start off with uh, the current situation we find ourselves in. Uh, how, how is Dubai, especially in the circumstances relating to uh, coronavirus? Um, uh, to be honest, um, the organisation of, of the country is, uh, is very good. And uh, at this time, we are uh, 14 days at stay at home. So we just need, we can go just to make like a, a food shopping and uh, emergency. But um, the good thing is, is they don't have too many cases here. Yeah. And they don't have too many uh, die people. So this is a good thing. But they manage very, very good. Yeah, that's no, good to hear. So we'll just start, uh, just before you joined Rangers, you were at Charlton. Um, just would like to know when you first heard of the interest, that Rangers were interested in you. But listen, the, the story is a little bit crazy. Um, <laughs> I remember I was in Charlton, we was in pre-season, and um, the coach Alan Paju uh, catch me, he, they told me that uh, uh, they have West Bromwich, they was in Premier League, so they want you, so you need to, to, to go there and to... to to, to negotiate. So I remember, so the next day I go there, so we was talking about contract, everything was fine, and I was doing the medical visit. It yeah. was like all the day. And uh, end of the day when I finish everything, so I asked uh, if I sign now or later, and they told me, no, go back to London to, to take your clothes. And after that, uh, you come back tomorrow and you will sign when you have the report. And when I start to move to London, I remember it was uh, the fitness coach, um, Adam Owen, because he was my fitness coach in Sheffield Wednesday. He said, listen, Majid, uh, uh, Walter Smith wants you, the club wants you, so do you sign yet or not? I say, no, I just uh, go back to London, take my clothes. And uh, he told me, listen, please take the flight and come. We want you, we want you, we want you. Yeah, and you know, I was thinking because I started to talk with West Bromwich, and after that, when I saw that how the club is big, you know, and yeah. uh, so I decided to take the flight in the night, go to Glasgow, and uh, I sent to Glasgow in the morning. That's, that's an interesting story, because um, he was our, our fitness coach. So you you had worked with him at Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah, I think I think he's the one because I know when Carlos Coelho uh, left to to Aston Villa. Yeah. They was talking about something about, and I think maybe give my uh, my profile to the coach and and uh, Adam Owen. He was one of the very good business coach, and I think uh, Walter Smith was trusting him and he loved him also. Yeah, I think they analyzed me and they said, okay, let's go, let's do it. Yeah, so Adam Owen, to thank for having you for those wonderful three years. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, wonderful. Did you? Uh, did you follow kind of the Rangers' UEFA Cup, Cup run to the final? Because it was a year before you signed. Yeah, exactly. It was the year before you signed. Yeah, I was following because they have one Algerian player, Brian Mendani. He was there. Yeah. They have uh, some French player like Darcheville Cousin. I know them when he was playing in the in France. So, yeah, they was they was close to do something amazing. And uh, the next year, I know that they don't finish champion. Yeah. Uh, this year. So we need to make like a Champions League, um, uh, I think pre pre pre. I don't know the name yeah. in English. I forget. Qualifiers. Qualify. Yes. Yeah. Qualify. And uh, and when I signed, I remember I was in the hotel. Yeah. And uh, it was raining. <laughs> it was dark. And I saw the team losing. This is the Lithuanian team, I think, Konas, FC Konas or something like this. Konas, and yeah. they lose. And we don't qualify in Champions League. So I was in my room like this with the rain, dark. I was very upset because I just signed and they don't qualify. So yeah, it was a small bad moment. Yeah. It wasn't too many of them. 
Yeah. So, uh, what, what was your first impressions of the changing room when you when you came into the setup? But when I came, uh, I signed and uh, I saw like the player like Darcheville, Cousin, Brahim and Danny. Uh, they have a Fer Ferguson and uh, but um, I have a very good uh, welcome, you know. I yeah. feel very comfortable, you know. And uh, I saw also the dressing room of uh, the Irock Stadium. Yeah. I was like uh, surprised because it's um, something unique in the world. You know, they keep the same dressing room that many, many, many years. So they have like something like special. Yeah. And uh, I'm after that, I saw the, the stadium. It was amazing when you come like this inside. So no, the first impression was, was fantastic. And especially you say Moray yeah. Park. Moray Park, when I visited Moray Park, it was something like, like all the big clubs in the world have it, you know? So. Yeah. Everything was good. So the facilities and the, the, the full setup was something you, that really drew your attention and made you choose yeah. Rangers rather than the Premier League? Yeah, for sure. Especially, you know, Moray Park, when you come inside, you can spend, spend all the day there, you know? Yeah. You can stay, you have many facilities for the recovery, for the food, for... It's amazing, amazing. So, you know, because in all my career, I, don't, I never had these facilities, you know? Yeah. So it was something very good for me. That's, that's brilliant to hear. Um, so you made your debut away from home at Falkirk in a 1-0 win. Do you have any memories about the game? Yeah, I remember well, Falkirk, we win 1-0. Yeah. I remember that uh, we had the penalty. Uh, Greg Z stopped it. And after we scored 1-0, so for, for the first game, it was very important for me to to, to have a success, you know, especially when you come in one club, you want to be yeah. like, uh, uh, no, don't want to be the black cat, as we say in French, you know. Yeah. So, but it was, it, it was tough, it was tough because Parquet, it was a small stadium, very tough game. And uh, I remember in, in, the, in the dressing room, every, every people was happy about my performance because it was my first game with them. So yeah. it's all time important to do well. And uh, so it was very good, uh, good memories. Yeah, it makes life easier if, if you're in there and you're keeping clean sheets, especially in your debut. Uh, yeah. What was it like playing alongside uh, David Weir? Was he a big help to you? Yeah, David Weir, you know, uh, for me, is, a, is an example. And for many players, because he, start, he stopped playing maybe at 41, 42 years. And when I was playing with him during these three years, you know, I feel very comfortable because when I was in England, uh, I was doing some mistakes, you know, yeah. and uh, because sometimes I take too much risk or something. And David Weir analyzed me very fast, and um, all the time he was talking to me. He helped me. He um, he gave me like the direction to 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 improve, and about also the concentration and everything. So he helped me a lot to improve. And uh, and the good things is, you know, when I was playing with him, I don't feel that he's someone that have 40 years. You know, his position on the pitch, uh, his movement, his concentration, he was like, he was all the time in the good moment, in the good position, in the good area, you know, and you don't feel anything. You can have a speed player with him, so you, you know how to control him. So, But I think to have a player like this near me, it was like something amazing. And like I told you, I improve a lot with him because... Yeah. I see him as an example, and I, I learn a lot, of, a lot from him. Yeah, no, that's, that's brilliant. I can imagine just playing alongside him and keeping you right as well, especially if you're maybe going to go and do one of your your runs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so your yeah, your next game was a home debut against Hart, or your home debut even was against Hart for a two 0 win, and you managed to grab your first assist. Was that a good feeling? Yes. Very good, especially <laughs> me. I, I like yeah. I like to give at least. I like to go forward. I like to cross. I like to, and you know, it was my first game at, at Brox. It was like, you know, s summertime. Too many fans. First game at home, pff, unbelievable. You yeah. know, unbelievable. So and especially with this assist, yeah. you know, my first two game. You know, this game helped me to. To give a very good, to have a very good relation with the fans, you know. Yeah. In the first game, they feel that uh, they sign a player who can 
make help the team and make something. And after this, you know, the confidence go higher and higher. Yeah, especially in your, your debut, your yeah, Ibrox. Yeah, I can imagine you just feeding off the, the confidence of doing well, getting your assist, and it makes things so much easier with the fans on side. Yeah. So you're thrown into the welcoming city that is Aberdeen. Uh, did you feel the love from the Aberdeen fans? Ah, it was a uh, it was tough game, tough atmosphere, and uh, and you know, they, they, I think they have with my three years there. I have three teams. It's very, very difficult to play. Away is Dundee United, Motherwell, and Aberdeen. Yeah. For me, it's the most difficult uh, uh, team because, you know, also the stadium is something different. You can see Motherwell and Dundee United. The pitch is, is not straight. They have something special, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and it's all time very hard to win there. But Aberdeen, yeah. yes. To go there and to win, I know it's like a big, uh, not a big derby, but it's like something special. It's a special game. And yeah. Uh, yeah, all the game there was very tough. Very, very tough. Yeah. Well, their fans absolutely love us. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that was a, a seriously tough start to your Rangers career. And uh, not only have you played against Hearts and Aberdeen, you've now got Celtic away in part of your first four games. How tough was your first Old Firm game? Uh, I remember the first one was uh, very good, you yeah. know. And uh, we win 4-1, if I remember. 4-2. Huh? 4-2. Oh, yeah. 4-2. Perfect. Perfect debut for me. <laughs> perfect debut for the team. And, uh, you know, before I start, I know that three years, um, the club uh, don't win the, the, the title. Yeah. Uh, about the championship. So, it was a very good challenge. And after this game, I feel that uh, we will go, we will go far, and we will take it because we start very well. We show that we have the quality, and we have a, a team with a very good experience. This yeah. is a good thing. We have many players with a very big experience, and um, so the first game, yeah, four-two was good. Uh, but um, I think you know when the people say speak about derby, I think this is a real derby. Yeah, a real, real derby. So you can feel like the 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 aggressivity, the love, the the hate, the everything. So to play at home and away, the atmosphere yeah. is uh, is a very beautiful uh, experience for the player and uh, very good like uh, memorize. You know, you know when yeah. you stop football, I still thinking about this game. So something amazing. Absolutely, I love the games. Are that they're they're great to get some anger out. <laughs> Uh, did anyone try and prepare you for coming up against Celtic? No, to to, to be honest, you know my my mentality, my uh, how I am. You know, play derby is something like natural for me because yeah. you know national team helped me to 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 prepare this style of game. Because when I play in Algeria, you you play in front eighty thousand, hundred thousand people yeah. with big pressure. Yeah. So, so for me, about the pressure, it was very easy. And me, I was like a player. More they have pressure, more I was good, you know? Yeah. Uh, sometimes uh, some coaches tell me that uh, when I play, if I can say small team, you yeah. know, uh, this is where I'm not good. But when I play like big team, this is where I, because I'm more concentrated, I have more pressure. Yeah. So, yeah, for me, it was something natural to, to play this game. Yeah. Had you ever seen any old for matches? Yeah, before, yes, yes, for sure. Yeah, which for sure. Seen? Like I told you before, I follow, I follow Brahim and Danny sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, when you was young, I saw it like, you know, in the French TV, they make sometimes the, the derby. So this, this derby is famous. Yeah. It's famous in the world. Also in Algeria, they follow this, uh, this derby. Ah, right. Is there any? In Algeria, they have... Uh, they have many fans. They have many fans. They have some fans from Rangers and they have some fans from Celtic also. All right. uh, Not so good. And, uh, <laughs> but when I play, when I play, when I was playing, they they were they was support me. They were supporting yeah. Rangers. Yeah, <laughs> that's good to hear. So hey, yeah, as, as I was saying, the, the game finishes four two, or as you were saying, the game finishes four two. Thanks to a solo run from Daniel Cousin, a double from Miller, with thanks to Arthur Boric. And that Pedro Mendes screamer. 
what were your thoughts after the game? Because you had two red cards and six goals. Uh, this game we had two red cards, huh? Uh, we had one Daniel Kuzan, but uh, Kuzan, Kuzan, yeah, yeah. But, uh, is it Hesselink for Celtic? I think he was only on the park a couple of minutes. Yeah, but I think it's like this, you know, the derby, you know, uh, too much pressure, too much like you are exciting. Uh, you follow, you follow a little bit the crowd, you know, when they are happy or not happy. So sometimes you can be more stimulated. But um, yeah, uh, when I play the derby, I think. Most of the game we have minimum more than one one red card, huh? if you analyze. Huh? Yeah. So so but it's good. It's good because this is derby. Yeah. And uh, we need it. Yeah, absolutely. So your first goal came away to Hibs at Easter Road. Was that a, a good feeling? Yeah. I uh, like you said, you know, I start very good with Rangers. So it was it was helping me a lot. And uh I remember it was um, a free kick on the side and I scored my first goal. Yeah. So very, very happy, very good feeling. And you know, when you start with one club and you feel that the people start to love you and to respect you very fast, this is yeah. very important for football players and they give you more confidence. And this is what's happened with me, you know? Yeah. So very good feeling, yeah, my first goal. Absolutely. Just speaking from that moment. Personal self, I love players that will give everything for the shot, contributing to goals, winning tackles. I love that sort of stuff, and I think you gave us it all. So, fast forward a few months, and it's uh, May 2009, Rangers v Celtic, neck and neck. What was the build up to that game like within the camp, especially like in the lead up to training? What was uh, Walter Smith and Ali, Ali McCoy's like? Yeah, um, th this season was, was, uh, was tough, tough because Celtic was. Uh, all time behind us, very close. Something normal, as you said, you know, every year is like this. And um, yeah, to be honest, like I told you, I feel I feel on this team a, a confidence. I saw this team with very confidence, experienced player. You can see the face of the player before every game and during the training that they don't have any doubts. And this is important because all the players give positive things to the other players, and uh, but me inside me, I was I was feeling that we will do it, you know. Yeah. And uh, but we win the we win the title in the last game. Huh? Yeah. So, right. so very very tough that's pressure, right. but like I told you, we have the player who need pressure. Yeah. And this is why we success. So that that particular game was at uh, Ibrox. But what did you prefer as a player? Uh, did you like 60,000 fans shouting abuse at you? Or did you like the, the encouragement from, from Ibrox? Both. Both. <laughs> Both. Both. Both, because, you know, um, like I told you, uh, you know, when people shout behind you uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the bad way, yeah. uh, it gives me more power. <laughs> or more more energy to 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 sh to, to show them that uh, who will do it. Yeah. And the other side, when you have the fans with you, of course, it's amazing. He push you again, you know. So yeah. for me as a player, I need the two, and the two is good for me. Yeah, that's brilliant to hear. I think that's uh, maybe something we're lacking just now. Sometimes it feels like that. Anyway, uh, so as you said there, we, we won the league at Tannadice, Dundee United. Uh, with Lafferty scoring a, a quick goal, something he seemed to do quite regularly near the end of the season when we were kind of looking for somebody to chip in with goals. So that was our first title in four years. What were the emotions like with the guys afterwards? But to to, to be honest, it was my first title also for for me. Yeah. Uh, in the championship, you know, it was my first title and. Uh, it was amazing. I remember me and Maurice Edu, we was like with Calafati, we was like not say the, the youngest one, you know, with uh, not so big experience. We don't play in big club. Yeah. And we was very happy. Uh, we was very happy because we win the title. Yeah. Uh, and we qualify. We know that we qualify in the Champions League. So yeah. Champions League is like a dream for every player. Yeah. And this year we go straight to the group. So yeah, this, this was uh, something amazing. And um, also, like the, 
the how you say it, the scenario of uh, of the season. You know, he, you play one season for one game. This is something yeah. crazy in the football. So if you lose, you will lose the title. If you win, you win the title. Yeah. And I remember we ma we managed the game very good. I think we win four one or something like this or two uh, one. I don't know. I haven't actually got that yet. I've got it in my notes somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we, I think we, 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 control, we control this game and... Uh, yeah, I think it was maybe three, three if I remember right, because I think uh, Boyd and Mendes scored in the same game. Yeah, yeah, but we, we, well, I think 3-1 three, three, or 3-0, three, 3-2, three, I don't know. But I know that we... I remember I was very comfortable in this game. Maybe the first 15-20 minutes was a little bit tough with everything, the pressure and all the things, but after that, I remember that I was very confident. Yeah, and um, so the, the helicopter come to bring the title. Yeah, and we we enjoy with the fans. After we go back to our box, we enjoy with the fans. So, no, very good experience. Amazing. Was that a good party afterwards? Yeah, yeah. I remember <laughs> some some player make a, you know was singing. We make we eat together. We make party together. So it was nice. Yeah, yeah that's good to hear. Um, so I don't know if you actually know this or not, but the Rangers supporters during that game that you were playing in, winning as a league title, we pulled a massive prank on Celtic supporters called Operation Tango. Had you ever heard of that? No, never. What is it? No. So, you can go onto YouTube and you can watch it, but it's, there's a link, and it, yeah, I'll, I'll maybe send you it afterwards. But it's uh, there's a picture okay. of Paul Hartley, the Celtic player at the time. Uh, grabbing the ball for a, for a free kick and you hear a roar from Parkhead and it turns out Rangers fans had texted them and told them that uh, Rangers were getting beat 1-0 or 2-0 I think it was and everybody was cheering at Parkhead thinking they were winning the title <laughs> Ah ok uh, yeah, Send me the link, I will see it yeah. oh, it's, it's quite funny It's funny. It's, it's one that the Rangers fans have got one up on them for <laughs> and you were Scottish champions too do yeah, you, yeah. Do you remember the game? One zero. Yeah. Yeah. Falkirk. Yeah, Falkirk. I remember is non. Uh, Novo scored a fantastic goal. We win one zero. So we have two trophies in one season. Yeah. Brilliant. What else? Yeah. yeah. I think that was uh, the game that I remember watching on Sky, and uh, Boyd, Chris Boyd, had said it was too warm to play football. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it was hot, I remember, yeah. Yeah, saying it's a 29-10 season, but uh, you were kind of hampered with some injuries. Is that How was how that mentally to deal with? In uh, which, which season? 2009-10, uh, that would have been your second season at Rangers. Ah, yeah. But you, uh, f the first season with Rangers was very tough, and also I was playing with Algeria national team in the summer, you know, yeah. so... I had, I think, two weeks holidays. I remember I was playing in uh, in Africa all the summer, and uh, it was a photo qualification World Cup 2010, and it was doing very well. After that, I remember it was before the game of um, one Champions League game or something like this. I think it was, uh, sorry, sorry. So we played Stuttgart. Yeah, I think the game... Well, after Stuttgart game, I think. Yeah, I make injury after Stuttgart game, I think. You know, I was um, doing uh, like a rondo with the player, and uh, my right leg slipped, and you know, my knee, uh, my knee come inside. Yeah. And I have a small um, a tear ligament inside in the right right foot. I remember. Yeah. So this is why I was out one month and a half. Yeah. Or two months. So it was something very bad, and especially because for me the season was was very good. We started yeah. very good. We started champion good. A national team was was close to qualify, and after this I come back after I think in November. Yeah. When I played the qualification of Algeria, we beat Egypt to go to the World Cup, and after this I start to be like uh, ready. Yeah. And uh, you, you managed to score your, your second goal away to Stuttgart to grab as a vital point. What was it like coming up against like the likes of Hamilton and Motherwell and then going and playing, you know, real tough opposition like Stuttgart? 
I think it's part of the job because we know that. We yeah. know that uh, you know all the all the team in the world when they play Champions League and they will go to play not as big team as we play in Champions League. But this is the difference about professional player and big player and you know small player. So for this, no, we manage it normally and we respect these things because you know when you play Champions League and you come back here, you need to respect your championship. You need to respect the team yeah. who you will be for because. They don't have the same money. They don't have the same uh, value of the player. So yeah. we all start like that, you know, yeah. before to be in the big club. So now this one we take it as a professional and respectful. Yeah. So you, do you think that prepares you for for big games like playing in Scotland and then coming up uh, coming up against the European teams? Because I feel like the Scottish games like quite quick. Like players are always wanting to press you. I don't know if this is maybe just a more recent thing. Whereas, like maybe in, maybe in Europe, you've got a, a wee bit more time. The, the, yeah. To to be honest, you know, when you see the the level and the spirit and the speed of the game of um, of uh, UK, like England and Scotland, you know, sometimes you can play Hamilton or Falkirk, but you will see some players they can run two hundred percent for ninety minutes. They will press you. They will fight you. Yeah. So this is this is. This is something like about fitness and the team, sp the, the spirit. Yes, it helps you. Yeah. And after, when you go to the Champions League, yeah, you have more time, more space, but you have more clever uh, players. You know, yeah, defend them. So because, it's harder to break down. Yeah, because the player you have in Champions League, you know, before they have the ball, they know what they will do, which movement the other one will do, the other one know that he will go. You know, it's yeah. something like you need to play with your mind and. Uh, yeah. This is the difference. Yeah, absolutely. So you were absolutely terrific, I thought, at Old Trafford as well. What was it? Do you remember much that night or was that a bit of a blur? Yeah, we draw 0-0. Zero, zero. I remember we changed the system. We play three in the back. And uh, yeah, tough game, but uh, we play as a team. We fight as a team. And it was very, um, very good game. For, for, from the team, you know, because we don't concede any goal. We don't have so much situation, but we know that we go there. Uh, Manchester United will be like the, the, the leader. And, uh, but yeah, very good experience, very good memorize, and very good game from, uh, from Rogers this game. Do you remember any of the Man United players, maybe, maybe one you thought was the trickiest to come up against? Oh, to, to to be honest, because like I told you, we, we play as a, as a team, and you know everything was more easy for everyone because we was close each other, we fight for each other, and I remember about Rune Rune because I played him maybe three months ago in the World Cup, yeah, and we draw we draw zero zero, and I was marking him, and again I I mark him uh, in the telephone, and we make zero zero, so it was yeah. good. <laughs> So you had his number. <laughs> is, yeah. it out your, is it out your back pocket? <laughs> Some people did that. <laughs> <laughs> so your first home goal came against Dundee United in a 7-1 Dale mission. It was a wonderful solo goal as well. Yeah, this season was amazing because I scored Stuttgart, a fantastic goal like that. You know, I go from the middle. Yeah. And I make some, some runs. And uh, yeah, Dundee United. Is <laughs> you know some 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 friend of me told me that I'm crazy because <laughs> centre back centre back need to stay behind. Yeah, it's just to give the ball to the midfield and defend. That's it. But me, if you analyze me when I was playing in Rangers, how many time I go forward? Maybe in the three years I can say maybe more than 100 times. You yeah. know, <laughs> because I was doing too much run. Yeah, and I was running for that for this day. Yeah, and. Uh, after 6-1, I try to, I take one ball, I see the space, and I say, let's go again. And uh, I make some slalom, and uh, it was very good. Yeah. And especially this game, because it was my last game before I go to African Cup uh -huh. in 2010. So to go like this, amazing. But yeah. amazing goal. One, for me, the best in my career. Yeah. That's right, I forgot. Yeah. I, I think you've changed it now, but the African Cup of Nations, that's it. Uh... It was kind of January time, December, January time. Yes. 
So uh, I've got a wee secret to let you in on, something you won't know, but we were both on the park at the same time on the 29th of September against Sevilla at Ibrox. Yeah. We, we got a bit of a batter in 4-1, but Novo scored an absolute steamer. Uh, that, and that Sevilla team were full of talented players. Uh, can you remember any of them? Uh, in Sevilla? Yeah. Yeah, they have Fabiano, they have Canute. Yeah. I remember they have a school, uh, the French one, Skilachi, behind. Yeah. Uh, some yes, real, this is the one I, I remember. Yeah. Some real quality players. And also had uh, a young Javis, uh, Jesus Navas as well. He was playing yeah. right wing, yeah. Um, but yeah, I was one of the wee boys. See, the ones with the, the big Champions League ball in the middle of the park. Yeah. I was I was one of the boys on the middle of the park with the Champions League ball, waving it in the centre circle. Okay. It was it was a good experience, but see something that I found strange was I don't know if it's something you would have noticed, but every bit of the stands were all singing different parts of the song. Was that something that was uh, kind of regular to you on the park? You said about the song of the fans. Yeah, like when I was on the park, I could yeah. hear. I knew what they were singing, so I could tell that they were all singing it at different times, so it just sounded like a lot of noise. Uh, was that something that was quite regular in the big games? Like, you wouldn't really make out what they were singing? But if I understand that every game is like this, huh? Yeah. With the, with the sound of the of the fans and the, the crowd is, is, is part of, uh, of the motivation of the players, these things, you know? Yeah. And uh, especially in UK and, you know, you know when I was playing in Ibrox, when you when when you go to one tackle, you win the ball. Yeah. All the fans is 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 like sh- shouting and yeah. uh, and you wake up with more more spirit when you win the, when you make one good pass. They they all they make like um, they slap the hand and everything is amazing. Yeah. We it you, did that. It gets you pumped up. Yeah. So. Uh, Let's fast forward again to the 28th of February. It's 2010, Ibrox Park. You've had a pretty good game against uh, Celtic, managing to do a bit of showboating as well and throwing in that mm. little wink. <laughs> uh, that, that, I don't know if you knew that, but that's quite it's, uh, a meme. Quite a lot of the fans use the wink meme that you've done. Yeah. I can't remember who you've done the wink to, but... Yeah. But uh, anyway, what was your memories of that game? I, I think it's the is the game who made the difference to 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 go to win the title. Yeah. Especially in this time, I think we make a, we start to make the gap with Celtic after this yeah. game. A very tough game. Uh, we win one zero, and uh, in the end, ninety two minutes. Yeah, uh, I remember they have uh, Keane in front and. Uh, he was. This is a is a is a very good player. It's a very. This is style of player of Champions League player where the movement is very clever. You need to 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 see him where he is at every moment. If you lose him one one second, you will go to score. Um, so tough game, strong game, fighting game, mm-hmm. and uh, but for, for the wink, you know. Because you know, I I, I go to the contact with Kim and I know I have one yellow card, but. I was small contact. Yeah. And after I go back to my place and I see uh, Ali McCoy, so I, he told me that uh, calm down. I said, don't worry, don't worry. Small <laughs> wink, you know? Yeah. And um, and after that, the the goals, so I saw the, the, I have the corner, the, the ball come to my chest. Yeah. I shoot strong, Boric take off. And after uh, Maurice Sedou finish inside the goal, amazing. 92 minutes. Yeah. Fantastic for the fans. Very, very good. Absolutely, full of X to say that day um, in, in the stands. But uh, I don't know how Boyd didn't put that away at the, at the start after your shot was kind of palmed out with Boric. Yeah, and, and Chris Boyd was close to take it from... The, I think Chris Boyd helped Maurice to score also because when Chris Boyd was close to Boric, he wanted to bring the back other side of, of his and yeah. was Maurice was here. And, but yeah, it was yeah. it was... I was watching that back the other night and it, it brought back a lot of great memories. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It 
is super. The celebration was good also. Yeah. So it, it put us ten clear, uh, ten points clear in the end, and I think it pretty much won us the league that game. And uh, we ended up winning as as double winners again. So that's four trophies for yourself in two years. It must have been really great, especially you saying earlier it was your first uh, championship that you had won as well, and that's you had two in two seasons. Yeah. So two years, four trophy. Uh, I qualify in the World Cup. Uh, I go to the semi final in African Cup. I play Champions League. So two okay, years season. with all this, all this, all this uh, event and uh, matches I made is amazing. This is why you know, the, like I said, you know, this club helped me to to improve because I start to have a winning mentality with Rangers because yeah. you, this is like this. You need to win every game and. Uh, no, this club, you know, is, is this is one of the key of, of the success of my life because they changed my mentality. Yeah, that's what gave you that kind of winning mentality, which is obviously helpful being a successful footballer. So, um, did you yeah. captain the, the Nigerian national team that at that African Cup of Nations, or is it in future future years? No, uh, I was uh, I was captain from two thousand twelve. Yeah, because after the World Cup 2011, uh, the the old captain go and I was uh, the experienced one. So after this, we go we, we qualify to Brazil 2014. I was the captain, and uh, I was lucky because I scored the the goals to qualify to to Brazil. Yeah. So same thing, very good memory. So yeah. Is that, is that a great feeling, leading your team out with the armband? All the hopes of your nation on you as well? Yeah, yeah, true, true. So, you got to live your dream doing that, but just jumping back to the 2010-2011 season, you started this season staying injury-free for, for most of it. Uh, so the club managed to get all the way to the last 16 of the Europa League or UEFA Cup at that point, narrowly losing out to PSV. What was your dressing room like coming into the big European games? But uh, I remember we win in Sporting uh, Lisbon. Yeah. I remember Maurice Edou scoring in the last minute to qualify. And PSV in November, we was close to do something. And I think the referee, I remember this game, he, he makes some mistake, you know. I think he was the one responsible of this not qualification of the next round. Yeah. Because we do a strong game in PSV, I think we draw 0-0. Yeah. And absolutely. to make draw there is very, very hard. They have a good team. Yeah, and at home, we lose 1-0, but we have some situation. We have normally one penalty. They don't, uh, they don't wrestle. So we have many regrets about the referee. But about the game, we give everything. This is the, yeah. the things that, the positive things. But the other things is like, I think the referee don't help us in this game. Yeah. But we deserve to go to the next round, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So moving on for that kind of disappointment, you, you ended up uh, defeating help help defeat Celtic in the League Cup uh, an extra time with we, we, uh, we, Vice uh, slipping a through ball to Jelovic. What was your, your memories of that? Yeah, I remember me, I got out because I, I had an armstring injury during the game. I think, um, you know, I was in the bench and it was difficult to, to, to see from the bench because... It was a tough game, 1-0, 1-1, and 2-1 with uh, Nicky in the hand with the, the pass of Vladimir Weiss. And uh, after that, when we qualify like this, for me it was good because another trophy uh, for yeah. the fans, for, for the player. So it was it was it was a tough game, but it was it was good, especially when you win Celtic. Yeah. Yeah. And also winning the league in the last uh, famously winning the league. Sorry in seven minutes in Rangers' his illustrious career. That was that was some moment that's still spoken about now. It's the last time we won a league title. How was that and what was it like to play in for you? Yeah, so in three years, you you get six trophies. It's amazing, and especially the major trophy, the championship title. So, and like you said, long time, they don't get it. And have three in a row is uh, something special for the fans because uh, I know that Rangers have uh, 54 titles in total yeah. in the career. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I think this is one one of the top uh, clubs with the most uh, title trophy in the world. So, 
So, you know, every title is very important for the fans, especially when Celtic don't get it. So, this is what they're looking for. And, um, yeah, three years. Three years, fantastic. And uh, after that, it was in uh, 2011, summer 2011, yeah. yeah. After that, I think um, the, the, the problem, the finance problem start to be... Uh, on the newspaper, we start yeah. to feel that the club, we still have some, some have some problem, and uh, after that, you know, you know the rest. So, some player go, and it was like a new new page. Just a quick question: Do you remember that day winning the league at Rugby Park at Kilmarnock? Because yeah, I think the full stadium was was full of Rangers supporters that day. And you know, Kilmarnock at this time they was a little bit tough because. They want us also to, 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 to don't win. I think they, they draw, they beat Celtic before, I don't know, but I know this game to play there uh, can be tough. And, uh, but the good thing, we score very, very fast, I think, after 10, 15, 20 minutes, and yeah. we score, we score, we score, we score, and yeah, the, party, seven, seven minutes. the party <laughs> starts after 3 0. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah so. And I, I think I think this season we were so close to Celtic, huh? the last one. Huh? We were fighting with Celtic the same day. Huh? Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, went down to the last day, yeah. Uh, Rugby Park, I'm sure, as well. Yeah. And all we had to do was win them. I'm yeah. finish, set them. So, I, as you said, this is years. Like this. Sorry, I, as you said, uh, three years, six trophies. That's a, a fantastic trophy haul you've got there. And it must fill you with a lot of pride. Yeah. Fantastic trophy, uh, something something new for me in the first year. But after that, it's like it's like uh, you start to be addict to to want to win the title. Like I told you, we change the mentality, winning mentality, and uh, and every game you win, every trophy you you take is like uh, something something good because you want all time more behind. Yeah. So that summer. Uh, you, you, you left Rangers, could you fill us in on what happened and how your move to Qatar came around? Yeah, no, the, the, the thing is clear, you know, and uh, I come back, so we start the pre-season and everything. We, we play the game because I heard something that, you know, I, I don't want to play the last game in Malmo, but no, at all, because the deal was not uh, still not on. And uh, for sure, I want to qualify the team, uh, not just for me, for the club, and I I take a red card, so because the referee I make my hand like this and the referee give me a red card, so it was something like shame to, to to finish like this. But how was the deal? The thing is, um, the situation of the club was normally I should sign four more years yeah. before 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 the summer. But after the after the summer, when the finance situation started to be bad. They can they cannot offer the contract for not just for me for all the players you know yeah and uh, after that they say we have a difficult situation of course they, they also want to they, they they keep me but in the table we had a good offer for the club for the situation for the club you know and uh, for me if I can live in the good way and and the club can win money is yeah. something good and also for me also I was feeling that. Um, I want to go to um, to Qatar because this is where I, you know, I want to to stay to live there in this area, you know, yeah. in, uh, in Dubai or Qatar or in the Gulf, you know, because I was feeling that, you know, I see I see everything and I want to see different things, you know. Yeah. My my way changed. I was thinking more about family also. Yeah. So this is why I go. So the club win money, uh, and you know, the page. Turn. Yeah, that's good. You got to kind of end up going to where you wanted to to go and finish off your career, which is it's not not, a, not something everybody always gets to do, is it? Yeah, but the the, the 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 things that people should know that you know because we we listen many things. We don't have any. They don't have any fight. I don't push myself to go. I don't say I want to go. I don't. The club don't make fight with me. No. Something was mature. We talked like uh, 
responsible person. So in this side, they have money for the club. They have something for my future on the other side. I mean, everything was fine, you know. Yeah. So this is the life. Most important that, like I said every every time, Rangers still in my heart. Uh, this is the club. Change, uh, change the player. Change me. Yeah. And uh, they are amazing. So I have big respect for this club and. Uh, and this is why I wish them all the time good luck and I follow them. Yeah. Sorry, I can't pronounce the name of the team that, that got your services, but how is the standard in, in the Qatari League? But to, to be honest, um, I was in front of 60,000 people. Yeah. And when I signed there, because here you don't have too much fans, so it was like 1,000 people, uh, 1,500, sometimes 200. So it was something different for me. Yeah. But uh, the thing is, like, uh, the facilities is very good. It's yeah. very good. They have everything. And um, it's different level, for sure. Because in each team, you have just four foreigners. And all the rest is local player. you know? Huh? So we are, we are there to try to improve the level and uh, to give the experience for the local player. Yeah. And... Uh, uh, for me, I like it, and especially with my family. My family was very comfortable there, yeah. and uh, everything was perfect. No, that's good to hear. Um, so you ended up uh, moving on to, uh, well, coming back over to Europe and Greece. How did that move come around? Uh, because my friend uh, Rafik Djubour, he was playing in La Pacos, and he signed there, ah. and he asked me, he said, come, Majid, before you stop football, come, they have a project with Aris Salonik, he's one of the big clubs in, in Greece. Yeah. And um, come to help us, I say, okay, I come. So I just played six months. But to be honest, I was feeling that um, for me, it's better to stop. It's yeah. not about fitness, about injury, because everything was fine. It was about like, I want to be young in the new experience, new job. So this is why I have opportunity to be coach. And I, I sit on coach and I take it. So I stop football and I take this opportunity. I go with uh, national team, yeah. Algeria, as an assistant coach, but as a, um, as an experience, you know, because they opened me the door to 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 start to come in one one staff. Yeah. And after this, I go to my whole club in Qatar to to be like uh, assistant coach with uh, second assistant coach with Belmadi for six months. Yeah, Jamal Bemadi, and uh, after this, he gave me opportunity to be head coach in under 23. Yeah, of my club, and I was there two years. I win two titles, and uh, this is why I stopped football very early, 24 years, because yeah. of this opportunity to be coach. Yeah. So is, is that something you've always wanted to do throughout your career? Is staying in football and, and going to coaching? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know, I know this quite a lot of players. Want. Sorry. Yeah, this is my, it was my, my, my plan, yeah. Oh, that's good to hear, because sometimes you get players and, and they've had enough of it, but by the time they get to retirement age. But uh, there's a few that, one of my heroes at Rangers was Stefan Claus, uh, the German goalkeeper. Um, I don't think you, you would have played with him, but I, I wish he had stayed in football. I thought he would have offered something to coaching goalkeeping, goalkeepers. <coughs> anyway, as you said, you, you've moved on to management. Um, so, your latest club, how did that move come around? After you had, was it under 23 as a year old team? And then you got your first. Yeah, yeah. so after two, after two years uh, under 23, and uh, I think it was a good time to me to start with the um, first team as the head coach. So, I have the opportunity here in the UAA to take the team of Fujira because I was player there before. So, I know that the project will be very hard because it's one team who go down and go up. And um, we start the season very good. And uh, after this, we have many small things that happened. And uh, it was difficult also to, to manage. But for the, the team that, uh, that I get, it was like to stay in the first division. So Ultin I stopped before February. We was like outside of the relegation zone. We still have the point that uh, to be to be safe, and after this we have we have a discussion with the administration because we have a different point of view of many things, and uh, you know like 
we have a very good relationship, so better to we stop uh, together in the good yeah. way, and this is what we do. Is that kind of disappointment when you see all your, your hard work kind of that like you're not able to continue that? But you know, when you are a coach, you have your philosophy, your way to work, your way to succeed, and uh, and you try to to give them this 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 experience, this understanding, this this knowledge. But during one time when they they don't follow, they don't understand, and they don't accept. It's better to 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 say, okay, let's uh, let's uh, let's go, and uh, I wish you all, all the best, and uh, and uh, and that's it. But the relation we go in very good relation. This is the good things because there are some clubs you go out, and no, this club is like family club is completely different. But for me, they can do better. I know I know exactly the the point. The weakness point why they are they are doing up and down but i don't have all the tools to to do it so for me it's, uh, it's time to to see uh, to see other projects but as a young coach you know i'm just 37 years don't be afraid you need to touch all the experience it's not like tomorrow you have one club you will be like top of the of the of the title no yeah you need to take all the experience as soon as possible like this when you start to go up any situation you will find, you know how to manage it. So for me, I want to take different situation. Doesn't matter. I'm not afraid. Yeah, that's, I want that's, to learn. This is the thing. I can see you're very passionate about it as well, and that's, that's, I love that sort of stuff. It's great to see. Um, so as you said, you had quite a few few jobs so young. So where do you think your, your next step is? But my my next step, same thing. Uh, try to to find the team. Uh, now this time I will try to have all the um, all the points that I want, you know, all the tools that, that I want yeah. to to succeed because I have a lot of experience here because I want to stay here first and uh, I know exactly the mentality, the the players, how to speak to them, how to manage them, how to work with them because it's different than Europe. So this is the things. Let's see. Now you know the championship all stops, so we need to wait. And uh, maybe here, maybe uh, other country around. Let Let's see. Maybe a blessing in disguise. The coronavirus situation that you can reflect on your time at your your last club, and then maybe try and get to get to do things a bit different in your next job. Yeah, of course. Uh, most most you have time to 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 analyze more or better, but. To be honest, after two months, I analyze already what what will happen, what will not, what what is the key of the success, and etc. You know, yeah. from the after two months, I I always spoke to my staff. It was exactly what I said from from them, and um, but to be honest, after one week, when I stop uh, with my whole club, everything was already in my mind for the next yeah. club. The good things, the bad things, and what we need to do, don't want to do. So, you know, as a coach, you need to have a fast reflection. A special example: you play every week, so when you stop one week, you need to relax very fast to to analyze and find the the, the, the weakness and the strength where you can improve, where you, what what you need to change. So you don't have time. So, but me, halas, you know, like we say here, everything is is planned for the other club. Yeah. That's good to hear. So you were talking about your philosophy a couple of minutes ago. What kind of philosophy does Magic Bagheera believe in? Well, my, my philosophy, as you know, when I was a player, I like to have the ball on my feet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like, I like if it's possible, and this is what we do uh, with this team, and most of the people, they were surprised about the way, the, the way we play. I like to have the position. I like to play like very simple, very fast with... Most of the time, two, three touch, one touch if it's possible. And um, I like to play in four, three, three. This is my um, my tactic, uh, my formation that I like. Of course, we need to adapt uh, on different situations. This is what we do this season because we concede many goals. So we go three, five, two, and we improve. But uh, yeah, I like to have the position, um, anim offensive animation, 
Uh, I like to see a beautiful football. I like to to see a team block. This is a very important. And today, most of the, my training is like based on the transition, because football modern is based on the transition. When you lose the ball, you need to react very fast. When you win the ball, you need to react very fast. It's all about this, you know. Yeah. So it's a mix of two. You know, I'm close to the Mediterranean style. You know, like Spanish, a uh, little bit French. You know, so. Yeah. This is the way I like. Did Walter Smith, like your time under uh, Walter Smith, did does he see influenced your, your coaching career? Yeah, uh, for sure. Walter Smith is one of the best coach I meet because he's different. Um, he's different than some of the coaches I have. He's someone very calm, and they have like charisma, you know. Yeah. And with this charisma, you have uh, as a player, you have a respect for him and. Uh, you are a little bit afraid to 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 try to disappoint him. It's like Ferguson style, you know. Yeah, he has something. He has something different that when you see him and you speak to him, the respect comes straight away, you know. Yeah. And uh, about you know about management, charisma. Uh, yeah, this coach I, I have some. I take I take from him. I have also Jamel Belmadi, you know, now the coach of national team Algeria, who won the African yeah. Cup. Uh, he's, he was in Qatar as a coach. He won everything, and uh, he was playing with me in national. I was playing with him in national team Algeria. I learned a lot from him, and he's a very, very good coach. Uh, I went to Italy to see uh, Sari, Sari in Napoli when he was there. Right. I spent ten days there. I watched the training, the philosophy, how he's thinking. I have the, the luck to 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 have a conversation with him, and. Um, you know, I take from most of the coach I have, and today after this, I try to mix with uh, with uh, with me. Yeah, that's that's great to hear. I love all that that sort of stuff myself. It was something when uh, at school we would be um, talking about what we want to do, and <laughs> me at like ten, I always wanted to be a football manager. <laughs> Never the player. I knew I wasn't good enough to be a player, but I always wanted to be a manager. <laughs> anyway. Uh, what was uh, well, uh, Ali McCoy, sorry, like as an assistant? Yeah, Ali McCoy, too, but when I was a player, he was the, the assistant coach of Walter Smith, and I think it's good for him because he, he, he learned a lot from him. After he, he was a head coach, but I don't know what's happened after, but uh, with us, he was like someone who, who make uh, many, uh, many sessions, you know? Yeah. He's like someone who has uh, a lot of energy. You have a lot of energy. It's close to the player. Uh, you know when you need to laugh with them or to be strong. And as a player, I really enjoy to have a coach like this also because uh, it's a different style than Walter Smith. And um, I'm disappointed that he still not be coach. I don't follow after, but yeah. for me, he's one of the of the of the ex player in Scotland that he should be he should be coached today because you have a lot of experience to share. Experience as a as a assistant coach with Walter Smith, he win he win title with us. So, but maybe he changed. I don't know. Maybe he changed the way he want to be. But uh, for me, yeah, if you want to be coach, you can. Have you got uh, any stories you can share with us about the team or your time at Rangers? Some story. Have you got any that you could share with us? <laughs> uh, I know. I know that. Me, I was coming every time, every morning late. <laughs> every morning. Every morning, example, we, we should be in the bike 9.15. Yeah. I come to Maripak 9.20, between 1.20, 1.25. Because all the time I need to drop my kids and sometimes, you know, I'm late because it's my fault. <laughs> and, you know, they have the, the bike and they have the windows. So yeah. I try to, to go quickly like Sneak this. Head. I put my clothes very fast. I go <laughs> I go from behind, I come to the bike, but they catch me many times. And yeah. they told me, why? I say, I say, I don't know, it's a sickness. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, other stories, other stories in Rangers, um, no, special, not special, no. Anybody that was a the prankster at Rangers at that time? No, I know. The one who was like uh, very crazy was uh, Kyle Lafarty. 
Yeah, he was the one who was doing the many, many, many crazy things, you know. Yeah. And, uh, but the, the atmosphere was amazing, you know. All people was was very respect each other. We we passed a good moment, and uh, everyone had his character. And uh, but the the mix was perfect. Yeah. So it was, it was an enjoyable workplace. If you could relive it uh, one moment in your Rangers career, what would it be? Um, I think the, yeah, the the first title, the first title, first title, three years don't get the title. Uh, you have uh, one match, if you lose, you don't get it, and you play away and uh, first experience. So, yeah, this one, it was uh, one of the best moments. Yeah. So let's pretend you're at, at your new club. See if you could pick one player that you played with. Who would you love to, to take into your, your new team? If you could take him in, your, in his prime, if you know what I mean, like if he could still play. Uh, Pedro Mendes. Yeah. As a midfielder, uh, unbelievable. The technically ability, very, very... Pff. Very is when he was watching him, you know, the touch and everything was amazing. And um, Chris Boyd, like this, he can score many goals. Uh, we can eat yeah. together uh, a burger. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll join this <laughs> because me and him, we had a party boy when he was there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I listened to. Uh, uh, another podcast, and they were they had a other Rangers player on that you wouldn't have known, Moshni, but he was talking about uh, Jimmy Bell, and he was saying how when you were at Algeria, Algeria brought out the skin tight jerseys, and you didn't like it. <laughs> Is that right? True. <laughs> yeah. True. Also, that... also, Jimmy Bell. Jimmy Bell, I give him a headache. <laughs> I give him. This size, I want short, I want double XL. I don't want XL, I want double XL. <laughs> yeah. Double XL, double XL. And the shirt, I said, the shirt, no, you need to make like this, like that. I give him headache. No, because in Algeria, you know, he was too tight. I don't have the body to put a t shirt too tight. <laughs> just, just in 2014, I lose maybe 20 kilo, yeah, but uh, before, no. Yeah. It's impossible. Impossible. Who do you think uh, was the best player you played with in your in your entire career? Uh, well, they, they have uh, Riyad Mahrez, national team. I play with him. Uh, he was was amazing when he started with us. You can see that he have very good quality. Um, after this, you know the. They have some Algerian players, uh, but, but don't, some people don't know them. Um, in Glasgow, they have um, they have uh, Pedro Mendes. They have Ke- Kevin Thompson. Also, was uh, I like him. Was very good. Was very good. I yeah, think very he, good left foot. He put in that that big nice challenge in in Kina, I think it was. Uh, yeah, he, he, I think he was a good player with his left foot. I remember. I was very happy to. Because when you give him the pass, you know that you know you have the quality to keep it and to, to make some good passes. Steven Davis also, very good yeah. player. He's there now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's very professional, very good player, talented player. They have they have a lot, you know. But I, I don't. I play this is some good player, very good player, but to, I don't play with like star player, not so much. So, yeah. so this is what I can say. You don't want him to give you any texts. <laughs> Why did you not pick me? Um, so who, who, who do you think was your, your toughest opposition your opponent? Even yeah, Drogba. He was he was he was in African Cup in quarter final. He was very very hard, very hard because he's fast, he's strong, his speed, he's very everything. He's yeah. complete player, and uh, he was very hard to to to, to catch in ninety minutes. Absolutely, he was a very, very hard. player. For me, it was, it was the hardest one. I, I remember watching him in the Premier League and he could do everything for Chelsea. Head the ball, hold it up. He's finishing the yeah, phenomenal yeah, amazing. Well. Yeah. Must, have, must have gave defenders a, a right hard time. Um, so that's kind of bringing us closer to the end. But did you have any regrets 
pet angels? Any regrets? Um, but if 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 they don't get this situation financially, I was I was I was I was sure to 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 continue there. Yeah. Because you know when they told me that we want you for more years, it means everything for me, you know. And I was yeah. feeling good in this in this club. So this is the only regret that the situation of the club go bad and uh, and. Uh, Today, uh, maybe I'm not here if we uh, if we don't get this situation. Yeah. So uh, I noticed uh, you're a UNICEF ambassador. Do you want to tell us a little bit of what that entails? <clears throat> yes, in Algeria, you know, um, now is from 2000, 2012, 2012, 2013. Yeah, so. When I have the opportunity, I go to to Algeria with UNICEF, and you know, as you know, football players, especially in the, in our country, you know, when we have some message to 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 say, they will uh, we have the more power to give some to pass some message, you know, positive yeah. message, and to especially for the kids because this is what UNICEF do. So we try to help in different uh, in different cases, you know, for. For the kids in Algeria, and uh, I go there for events uh, to share some message, uh, to help in some situations. So this is what uh, what we do. Oh, that's good to, to see you're giving like a little bit back. That's it's always nice. So um, mm. just going back to the the management stuff again. Was uh, is, is your aim goal to come back over to the UK to manage, or are you just wanting to stay out at, in the in the Gulf? No, I think. Um, we need to be honest, you know, as a, as a Arabic coach, you don't see, you don't see a lot of Arabic coach in, uh, in, in Europe. We, we need to be honest. So the best for us to start in, in is here because they, they, they know us, they, 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 they give us uh, re more responsibility and opportunity. Yeah. And, uh, this is uh, why I start here, but after in the future, you never know. Football change every time, you know. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, if they have some door open in Europe, for sure, I will, uh, I will maybe take this opportunity. And I think, you know, the best for me where the door can be open, maybe in the future, yeah, maybe in UK or Scotland, because this is where I pass more of the time. It don't mean that we will take a club in Premier League, no. Yeah. We need to be like, uh, we need to start from down, you know. Yeah. They have championship, they have League One, they have first division in Scotland, you know. Enfin, yeah. Premier League in Scotland is a bit different because I play in Rangers. But now not because I need to, to learn a lot. You know, I'm still young and I need to prove before that. Yeah. That's good to, good to hear you'd, you'd like the, the rain back in your life. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I think that's, that's us. Um, but that's kind of flown by, to be honest, uh, talking about your Rangers career. Uh, you've been absolutely exceptional and a fantastic player on the park for us. And you've been a wonderful person off it too. Uh, thank you, Midi. Thank you very much. I don't know if you've got any kind of final words for, for everybody that's listening. No, um, I would say, I would say, run just till I die. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> no, no, this is in my heart and uh, we never change. So I hope the club. Uh, this season we were, was good. We was we start good to maybe win the, the title. So now the situation with the coronavirus, so everything stop. But uh, you know the club is with a, a very good coach, Sivan Gerard, is doing a very good good job. And uh, you know it's just about time. Rangers, we come back where they deserve. It's just about time. No worries. So good luck for everyone and uh, big. Hi to we not letting go when song but sing spread out their wings fight fight